All right, YouTube, got a quick little video for y'all today. So I'm at a behavioral health institute and I had a no cooling call for this condensing unit on a traditional split system. Um, so to sum it up, the original call when I got out here was that it was no cooling and the condenser fan motor was insane, right? So it spins freely, it's not locked up, windings tested good. The 5 MFD fan capacitor was bad. It was at like 1.2 microfarads out of five. So when I was looking this over though, I noticed, and this is something that you can do for your customers to really help them out, is because this is a commercial building and there's a lot of bodies in here, even when it's cold outside, they sometimes still need to run the air conditioning because of the heat load that they have in. So you can tell right now on this roof, it's 52 degrees with a decent wind chill, but they still need this particular unit to cool the space. There's no head pressure control on this system. So as soon as the contactor gets energized, the fan motor is gonna spin and my head pressure is gonna be less than ideal due to the outside ambient temperature, okay? Something that you can do to help build up head pressure and uh, get a more stable differential in low ambient conditions is install a fan cycle switch. And this is something that you can recommend to your customers that run cooling even in low outside ambient conditions. So we've got, um, I went to United and I got an SFC 300-400. This is an R410A system. You want to be real careful with the pressure switches you get because they're all rated at different open and closed PSI. So basically how this works is you're breaking a line of voltage to the out outdoor fan motor, okay? So these are our fan motor wires right here. We've got our start and run, they go to the capacitors, and we've got our line right here that goes to the top side of the contactor. So like I said, as soon as this contactor gets pulled in, the fan motor's gonna run, even if it's 52 degrees outside. What this fan cycle switch does is you would install it onto the liquid line, and in our case, we're going to need to add a service T. Let me pull this out of here real quick. So you can get these service tees and you want to make sure that you've got one with a core depressor inside of it to depress that Schrader. Typically they have a Schrader core in one port and the other doesn't so you'll need to add a Schrader core and also double check to make sure this Schrader core is tight because sometimes they just set them in there and you don't want to blow it out. So you'll have to install your service tee with a little dab of nylog and you're going to want to wear gloves because you're going to be attaching this most of the time to a system that's already under pressure. So it's gonna spit out a little at you as soon as that depressor hits that core until you tighten it down all the way. So don't freak out, just keep twisting until it seats and seals all the way. You're gonna have your pressure switch already attached on here. And basically one leg of this pressure switch, it's got a female terminal in here. I'll open it up when we get to that point and show you how to do it. And you're gonna run one leg to the top side of the contactor. So the contactor is going to get energized, send voltage through the pressure switch. Your condenser fan motor wire that is normally on that leg, you're going to pull off, usually clip this terminal and strip it back, and you're going to wire nut it to the other wire on the pressure switch. So what's happening is the contactor pulls in, sends voltage through the pressure switch. The pressure switch, this for 410A, is it opens at 300 PSI, give or take 15, percent, uh, 15 PSI. So it'll open at 300 PSI or below and it won't run the fan. It'll break that circuit of power to allow the head pressure to build up to a better load. And then once it reaches around 400 PSI, give or take 15 PSI, that switch will close and it'll send voltage through the pressure switch 
back to where you've got it wire nutted to the fan motor and it'll energize the fan motor to relieve the head pressure until it drops back down to that lower range and then it'll cut out again. So we're gonna install this and I'll show you how it's uh, wired up and all that stuff, get this contactor in here and then we'll gauge up and watch it operate and cycle. Okay, so like I said, the cap that comes on these service tees, you see how that Schrader core is loose? So you're gonna to wanna to take a tool. Most of the caps will have a tool on there. Let's get it to focus. Tighten that up. One of the Schrader ports, service ports, it won't have a core in it. So you'll need to add one in there, like that right there. And this fan cycle switch, it has a core depressor down in there. So I like to leave a Schrader core in there in case you have to, ever have to take it out. You don't have to pump down or recover the charge. So we're going to put a little bit of, of Nylog right here. And then I like to install the pressure switch before I actually mount it to the unit, right? So you're not losing excess charge. And it's just going to thread on like that right there. You can use either side. So let's get a little bit of Nylog on there. blue we're gonna put just a little bit a little bit goes a long way with this it's just a gasket thread sealer and then we're going to basically hand tighten this at first like this right here and now you're gonna need a set of two crescent wrenches going to back up the body of the service tee and put a crescent wrench on your fan cycle switch and just tighten it up. You don't have to overdo it. Get it on there like that right there, like that right there. Just like that. So now we're gonna put this onto the actual service port of the liquid line. Like I said, we're gonna put a little Nylog on the service port of the liquid line and it's gonna spit refrigerant until you've got it fully sealed. So don't freak out, just keep moving until you cinch it down. Okay, so we got that on there. I put a little bit of Nylog on the threads of the actual service port of the liquid line. Like I said, it's gonna spray a little refrigerant at first. Don't freak out, make sure you've got your gloves on back up the body of the service tee and apply counter pressure and just tighten it on nice and snug. You don't want to overdo it and crack the flare. so we've got it installed so now we have an access to actually check liquid line pressure then we're gonna undo our wires feed them up through here and I'll show you how it's wired up okay so we've got the wires ran through this grommet that our low voltage comes through um, put some zip ties on it to try to make it look nice I usually put a zip tie right here so it doesn't get pulled back through that grommet so basically what we did is we took our black hot lead that normally went to the contactor and we took this pressure switch wire and put it in its place. So when this contactor energizes, it's going to send power down through the switch. Based off the PSI, if it's at 300 or below, it won't let power back through the other side. Once the head pressure climbs to 400, which is what this is rated at, that switch will close. It'll send power back through the switch where we've got it stripped back and wire nutted to where our fan motor wire originally went on the contactor. So now it goes from the contactor, runs through the switch, back to the fan motor wire completing the circuit based upon the pressure inside the liquid line. So let me get my probes on here. We'll go back down to the stat, turn it on, get a call for cooling, 
and we'll check the pressure and verify that that switch is opening and closing in the range that it needs to in adjusting and controlling our um, head pressure as it's designed to. All right, guys, power to the unit. You can see we are currently at 230 head and we are climbing and our fan motor is off. We're not pulling any amperage through it. So it's pretty cool in the space right now. It's about, I don't know, 68 to 71. So we're climbing up 300 and around 400, give or take 15 PSI. That switch will close and it'll send voltage back through to our fan motor and turn it on and drop our head pressure back down to the range that it needs to be. this condenser fan it doesn't need to be running right now at this outdoor temperature it's 55 degrees our fan still hasn't kicked on and we're still maintaining a 350 psi hit climbing up like i said right now it's about 52 degrees outside So right there, 400, our fan has come on. pressure control works it's really good for low ambient conditions that still need comfort cooling so if you've got some commercial customers that they run a system set up like this and they always have a heat load in the building and even if it's 55 degrees outside you know and they need cooling it's really advisable to install some sort of um, head pressure control for the condenser fan motor So there's 400. Ran back down to 300. Working just the way it should. So you can see when we drop back down like that, our subcooling basically bottoms out because our head pressure is so low. Now that we're building up head pressure again, our subcooling is going to rise to a good range. We are using a TXV. And it's going to run a lot better like this in low ambient conditions. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like, comment, subscribe. Any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I will leave part numbers to the parts that I use in case you need the same thing. Just make sure, guys, if you get a pressure switch, make sure it's rated within the range that you need. So if you're running an R22 system, obviously you're not going to use a 300 PSI open and a 400 close. You're going to need to look at ask your rep or look at the back of the box and make sure that it's rated for the refrigerant that you're going to be using see you guys on the next one peace